So it was 2018. I had no job, no salary, no hopes, basically. I wanted to work in the game industry. I had a degree, but it really didn't mean anything. And where I live in Lima, Peru, in Latin America, there isn't any game industry, really. And something happened. And in one year later, I was in China working in Ubisoft or one of the biggest IP called School and Bones. Now, how, how did that happen? Uh, there are a lot of things I, I can share with you. Um, one year before going uh, for Ubisoft, I decided I wanted to increase my portfolio skills. Um, I saw that there was a demand for environment art. At that time, I was doing like 3D for basically anything. I was I started to learn like in 2012, seven years later. There's still a lot of things to learn. Like uh, I, I was doing characters, I was doing materials, I was doing environments. Uh, I did rigging for a long time. I tried animation, I tried VFX uh, a little bit. Uh, I did quite a lot actually. And a lot of things, things matter when you enter a big company like Ubisoft. They really just want you to be a specialist. So I thought at that time, I wasn't really sure of that decision that, hey, I'm, I'm going to focus on one skill. And I, I had to decide, like, do I want to do characters? Do I want to do environments? And later on, I will, I will change for something like I'm maybe more passionate about, but I don't know. And I chose environments. Okay, so with the skill set I had, I enrolled multiple mentorships. I spent quite a lot of money and I had some luck for this kind of thing. The, the first time I enrolled a mentorship with Ryan Benna, um, uh, he was, uh, I think he was a lead environment artist at Insomniac Games. At that time, he was working in the new Spider-Man uh, released many years ago. Uh, still very popular today. And during his mentorship, had like six weeks of working in a project here um, with him. And he was guiding me. He was giving me advice, all these six tips. And I, I really learned a lot there because he was only focused on environment art. Okay. And he really gave me a lot of insights of how the industry works and how I can solve problems when doing environments. Sometimes you fix things doing it in another way. For example, your texture looks bad. You can either change the texture or you can put something there. Right. Um, after, after being with him, um, I got a portfolio piece. Uh, I put it on art station and I put a little bit of attention and I didn't finish it. Um, the reason is, uh, I got an opportunity here to win like $5,000 or so. And it was like doing a VR game um, for a private institute from Germany here in Peru, where it was a game jam. And we had three days to create an app. And we, I just created with, uh, with a friend, Ram, who is the one that does the programming tutorials here, and two other, two other more friends. And we need, we needed more people. So we won, uh, and I used that money, uh, after dividing the money between all of us, I used that money to enroll to CGMA, 
TG Master Academy. And I enrolled a course called Organic World Building with Anthony. And Anthony, uh, this CGMI course are very well structured and they have pre-recordings and also live sessions and also the personal feedback for each environment. Well, you need to really do the homework. And I chose, uh, I chose a snow environment. I really didn't want to do trees or anything like that. Um, I just, I don't know. I felt like I wanted to create a snow environment. And after, I think it was like 10 weeks of working on this, uh, I didn't feel like it was ready to share it. There are a lot of things that I had to change, especially after the feedback. But I decided to put it on ArtStation. And I don't know what happened, but at that time, uh, 2019, um, uh, it got a lot of attention. Like I put it on a Facebook group, it got like 400 likes. And and then I check my art station page and it has a, uh, a few likes, uh, more than before. Um, I learned there that you cannot wait for the perfect time to, to share something. You just need to you just need to leave it, you know, and if I had to wait, I will have lost the opportunity because the same day, like, let's just say I post it and maybe two, two days later, I wake up with a message from one of the directors in Ubisoft, asking me if I want to go to China to work there. Uh, he didn't really specify the IP or anything. And I said, yes. So I took the interviews. I did the art test. It took like one month of interviews and doing the art test. And so in the end, I got it. Uh, I got it. And, and then I, I go, I go to China to, to start a new life. And like. I tell you before, I was doing a lot of things before because I was like selling assets in the marketplace. I was like, um, you know, trying to make some games. I tried to do some indie games before. Uh, when I got into Ubisoft, I see that most people are specialists and that really can affect you because in such a big company, the roles are very, very uh, specialized. You know, uh, there is not much things you can do there. For example, if you, when I teach you how to make this environment, I teach you everything from scratch, like how to create the terrain, um, how to make the materials, how to make the lining and everything. Uh, there, if you want to change a material, you cannot, you cannot create a material that's for another person. If you want to change the sky or something, you cannot do that. That's for another person. Um, so basically what you can only do is to do a very specific task with, which was uh, world building, uh, and world building, um, was basically, you know, drag and drop, but it has a lot of challenge too. And there you are surrounded by people who are used to do that for so many years. And they're they are quite good at what they're doing. Uh, but many of them don't know how to do other things. For example, I knew many guys that were very good at doing environments, but they don't even know how to create a material. As basic as this may sound, that was the level of uh, focus that they had in a company because it was, you know, it's hundreds of people working in a project. They only want you to do one little thing. 
And that chucked me for a while because I'm a guy who was used to do a lot of things, especially if you work like in indie games uh, or other small projects where there's usually a small number of people working there. Uh, you're going to do a lot of things, if not almost everything, right? So it took a while and one of the things I learned in Ubisoft, I had an art lead. Um, she, she was very good to me. Um, she noticed that my weakness uh, was not really that technical ability because I was doing a lot of uh, proposals to, you know, uh, you know, make that pipeline a little bit better. Um, but only moved into technical things. Um, but she was mostly focused about art theory and art fund foundation, which I really didn't pay attention before going. And she actually told me that was my weakness when I, when, when I joined the company, like you have a, a lot of good things, like, you know, like, you know, substance, you know, materials, you can do all these things. And like, there's a lot of potential. But for this kind of position, you really need to have a good eye for art. So at the same time, while she was mentoring me, she was teaching me a lot of things like color theory and why she make some decisions and compare my work to others. Um, after several months of doing that, um, I was starting to, I was starting to get better. Uh, much better than before. I also took the, uh, you know, I also was a participant of my own rescue. You know, I was studying a lot by in my own site. I enrolled to many uh, new master academy courses. If you know what it is, it's a great resource for learning and art foundation and all these things. I'm still in role today to learn art foundation. And, you know, I learned a lot of things. I love composition and color and all these things. And what I learned from here is that it's not usually the technical ability that is like you down because to be honest, my tech skills haven't really changed over the last three years. Like, I'm not as up to date as I was before with the new tech. I'm not as up to date with the new tools for maybe modeling or animation or character workflows. I'm not really up to date for many things, but when I create something as simple as it is, I use all this art foundation to make something look good. And that applies to everything well, for painting, for sculpture. It really changed everything you do in your, in your work. Even if you use a very primitive tool, whatever you do, you will, it will look good. And people who follow the tutorials I make, uh, for this channel, and are sharing what they create. Um, I, I'm very happy to see it. Yeah. But when I see it, like this is nearly such a good environment. If only you have to do this. But um, that's the kind of thing that makes a big leap when creating something great and something, you know, um, normal or average, and that is applying the, that is applying the art foundation because when you apply it, suddenly like you, you know, artists have a very special language to communicate things. They see things about lines, form, shapes, color, composition and all these kind of things. And when you create something, 
if you are using the logical brain, like I'm gonna put a rock here, instead I want to have a line here, I want to have a shadow and a light here that have a contrast, then uh, suddenly your work starts to change. And when you already know these things, you have been doing that a lot unconsciously, you make better decisions. Every time you make something, you're thinking about this hidden artist terms that were unavailable to you before you study them. And once you study them, suddenly your your work starts becoming much better. Um, I believe I had luck to enter Yusuf. There is always a degree of luck. Um, I was good in other things that other people wasn't there too. And I feel they saw that. That's why they hired me there many years ago. Um, but what I recommend you to, if you want to get a job in the game industry and you're not in an area where game industry is very big, for example, if you be, live in Canada or United States or United Kingdom, Germany, these countries uh, have a very well-established game industry and it's easier to get a job there. It is very easy if you're already a local because when you're a foreigner, um, the companies really need a really good reason to hire a foreigner. So if you want to get into these companies, and you're not from there, it's gonna be harder for you. And you really need to stand out. And my advice for you is just to study the art foundation for a long time. And you may think that you are wasting time because you're not you know, using Unreal or Blender or ZBrush or whatever. And that's okay. Uh, I used to feel the same too. But basically doing this art foundation will help you to improve your levels in ways that you don't, you cannot imagine. Um, there are many stories I can, I can tell you. Um, if you are interested, let me know in the comments. It's the first time uh, we do a video like this. So remember guys, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Hope you have a good one.